Visual art has been around for thousands of years. Early man used art as a means of communication in the form of cave paintings. Later, it took the form of rock paintings and sculptures. Art has travelled from the cathedrals and the private bedrooms of the royals into gallery spaces, homes, and even onto the streets. The worldly acceptance and demand for art breeds new artists every day. The artists we now know as the masters, such as Michelangelo and da Vinci, all created commission-based pieces. The idea, the general design, and the final outcome were all prescribed either by the church or by very affluent royals like the Medici family in Italy. In the old days people were commissioned by higher authorities to actually produce pieces of art. But I think that still happens, but it happens on a different level. The money was big, the art was bigger, and these were the artists the world saw. Commissioning was a way of at that time. While today we have many options in life and our society has uh, changed multiple layers, so obviously art would also change. But who are the artists we notice today? Art is what I breathe in and breathe out. The, the money is not the most important uh, aspect of it, do you understand? It is the joy that you derive in it that makes the whole thing cool. As a kid I never knew that I would become an artist or... I never knew that one could become an artist. One day they you will become that artist where everyone will either be buying you or for self-satisfaction. It's a dream, so follow that dream. So, does the art make the dream a reality or does the dream make the art? Segon Alonge has been a painter his whole life. He works with a passion to communicate his message. The money is not a priority, the art is. I can still uh, remember vividly when I was at home in Nigeria. I was very young then, very, maybe around uh, three or four. I used to see my elder brother then drawing some you know, cartoons, you know, making uh, football stuff, you know, people playing football. And from there, I picked it up. I love it, actually. And ever since, I've been drawing, but not that good, you know. But when I got to primary one, I met a friend of mine. I, I met a guy. He's a friend of mine, uh, that one. And he used to draw, you know, and I love his drawing. And from there to, I think I improved a little bit. Art is good to me. I love it, it makes me happy. When I do it, when I paint, I'm happy. And I don't think I can find that kind of joy in any other profession. I paint, I paint every day, and you know, people will not buy. You know, they will not buy. It's actually hard, you know, and sometimes I was thinking, uh, have I made a mistake? I mean, as far as artists, like student artists and young artists who are, who are not at the cutting edge of what's going on, obviously there are tribulations and there is struggle that they actually go through. I mean, a lot of artists have to compensate to do their art, like musicians, artists are the same. Like whether they be graphic artists, fine artists, they have to do other sort of work as well to earn money to actually develop their love for what they do. So yeah. They Amar Saeed is a gallery owner in Birmingham, a former lawyer who has always been passionate about the arts. He provides artists a platform to showcase their work in a busy city that is otherwise very professional orientated. So yeah, we see a lot of artists that kind of, we give a lot of space to artists, young artists who are struggling and also we accommodate international artists as well. So there's, there's two dimensions to what we do. So yeah, they, they, with the young artists, definitely a struggle. They, they, they have to go through, jump through many a hoops of fire to actually get to where they are, unless they do something that is groundbreaking and it's in the media and it's been picked up by the press, then, it's, it's, then their career elevates to another dimension. But however, that takes a number of years to do. Either the artist dies before he becomes famous, or he instantly becomes famous. 
I've been involved in music for a number of years and actually sort of produced music and kind of seen the struggle that artists and musicians actually go through. So for me, this, this was more of an outlet for young, young artists to actually groundbreak, you know, sort of break through into the arts world. I think if there wasn't people like ourselves who are self-funding, um, we don't actually get any funding from sort of bodies. If there wasn't organisations like us, then there'd be no one there for them to actually have a platform to actually show their artwork. Pratiba, an accomplished painter and art teacher, has been living the artist's life for the past 20 years. Apart from being a recognised artist, she urges her students to stay true to the art, whilst thinking of innovative ways to fund their practice. I love to see myself as a painter. And I do my paintings, but I also know the kind of uh, setbacks I face because of the job which I am bound by. So if the funding agencies are good and we can get well funded, it's so wonderful. But in reality, it never happens. Um, it's okay, good, but wish we had some more education with the uh, other organizations which understand art as a wonderful cultural setup, so they are ready to contribute. If they were doing that, then it would have been wonderful that we didn't have to do these two things. Like some, many of us wouldn't have gone for that uh, odd jobs to just fetch a little money so that I can extend my art. I wish we had some agencies which would fund it. When I was young, um, nature was my companion. It was a real good friend. Had this opportunity to live with a lot of trees and birds and animals around. And as I grew, I became a caretaker of the nature. That is, started teaching children the importance of conserving, protecting natural resources and things like that. And then, now I reached a place where I feel that I'm not a caretaker, I'm not a companion, but I feel that I'm one with nature. Ajesh Suresh has worked as an environmental activist, a teacher and a theatre personality. Today he has returned to his art at the age of 32, but his ways of producing this art steers away from the ordinary. I work on issues related to environment and this work, the thought of this came into me when I saw this tree getting cut down near my room. Always wanted to stop since, I mean, many years, but I could never stop a person from cutting the trees down because they had their own explanations, construction, whatever, whatever that is. But as an artist, I just wanted to um, dedicate a work to that tree. Yeah, and I picked up a few pieces from there. I don't remember which of these pieces was that. And I picked up a lot of waste wood over a period of two months. And I titled this work, Memoirs of a Tree. Basically what I'm trying now is mixing performance with space. That is, I'm trying to involve with my work, not just as an artist, but as a character. Or even right now when I think about a painting, when I look at a canvas or when, when there's a paper in front of me, it takes days for me to start off with something. Yeah, it, it has become so difficult for me. but. When I come across a space, it pulls me into it. And uh, depending on the availability of the space and the materials, I go out and do a work. I mean, this, this thing right now mm. is what you call a mess. Mm. And I think that's exactly what I wanted to portray. But then since it's a performance, I will know this thing, only once you look at the, look at your work, when you when you when you look at the photographs or when you look at the recording, and yeah, it feels really good. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it feels good. 
I think attitudes have changed over the years that where people thought it was hard to become an artist because of technology, everyone's a photographer. Everyone's an artist. Contemporary art breeds contemporary artists where there's no specific sort of genre, but it's a mixture of art. And anything can be art. This cup can be art. You know, it's how you interpret art. Uh, the moment camera came in, artists challenged, especially painting. And then the whole uh, absorption has started. So today, do, using Photoshop and doing what has happened is, one side is very positive. That is, it has allowed anybody to become an artist, removing that hierarchy and the superiority about it. But at the same time, it has made it so lucid. Like, um, anything you scrap up and put up, you call it art. The aesthetic part is a little bit, uh, is a difficult tablet to solo right now. Art has most certainly come a long way from the prehistoric cave paintings to the graffiti on walls of big cities. Artists like Ajesh Nalonge are looking to make a name for themselves in these urban jungles. For artists today, it is no longer about a dream. It is not about the money, and it may not even be about the art. It has become a way of life.